short message from our keynote, a uh, keynote challenge by uh, Chief Sheikh Nooder by me. And so I'll just give, he doesn't need any special introduction, but I'll just give a short um, bio and summary of um, who he is. So Chief Shekelin is an engineering graduate and he is one of uh, Nigeria's foremost uh, foremost uh, sportsmen of his generation. Now at the at the age of 71, he is still very much a sportsman. And one of the things that he hates to do is to miss um, a tennis game or other sports games. And he still uh, strives to remain um, fit. He was also appointed by the United Nations as a champion of enough to draw attention and essential action to the issue of the silent killer of millions of people around the world, with Nigeria being one of the worst affected environments. Um, basically, it's a program that targets uh, novel diseases um, and basically try to fight against that by encouraging um, a healthy lifestyle and other simple solutions to help uh, reduce the chances of people developing those to be um, those diseases. And so we'll learn more about this later. So we really encourage everyone to stay um, till the end. Um, we're really glad to have him here to set the tone for our seminar today with his keynote challenge. So please help me welcome Chief Shegu Odebami M-O-N. Mm -hmm. mm, good evening. Um, <laughs> let me thank you for inviting me. And let me apologize that um, until some 30 minutes ago, when Isaiah called me, um, I was buried in some and uh, these days uh. I am besieged with all manner of activities, too many things in my port. And I didn't one of them. So even the subject matter, which you want me to talk about today, <clears throat> um, that I didn't prepare for. <clears throat> I am only going to say what I will say, not from any position of scholarship or any proud knowledge of it, uh, or that I'm a professional in it. Um, I'm just, I won't call myself a victim, but just the few experiences in it I would share with you this evening. I hope that that would be enough for everybody to take one or two lessons from. Um, I don't know why I was chosen to deliver this speech, but I get a ground in sports. We assume that um, we live well and we will do everything that they need to do to at least improve their state of wellness and well-being. But you will find that we are the worst culprits. The moment we stop our professional careers in sport, I have found from my experiences that most of us to, you know, become unable to sustain the, you know, the commitment, the dedication that you know, being a sportsman requires. So uh, we just go back into this sedentary lifestyle that won the Nations Cup, that won the Cup Winners Cup in 1976 are dead. Um, easily over a third of those of us that won the Cup in 1980 are dead. And um, you find out why this is so. Um, you will find out that it has to do with um, issues of non-communicable diseases. Um, I learned myself some over two decades ago, I was invited by the Nigerian Heart Foundation on the premise that I'm a sportsman, that I will be the best ambassador for their program, which was a golf tournament. They wanted to market a golf tournament and they invited me to come and be the spokesman for the Nigerian Heart Foundation. That's how I got involved with them. And I got to know what their activities were. And as Providence would have it, I was in the process of establishing my own school, a sports school for young children, for young boys and girls from the ages of 10, 11 to 16 and 17. And um, so these two coincidences brought me 
face to face with the issues of um, the, heart, the heart, the activities of the Nigerian Heart Foundation. Remember, I was invited to market, but I got to know the activities. And I was fascinated with what they were doing. And I saw the coincidence with what I was doing in my school. Um, we went together to Nairobi, Kenya for, for the program with the Nigerian Heart Foundation. And there for the first time, I learned about what is called active transport, which is the quantum of physical activity that a person does on a daily basis. And how important active transport is in the lives of every human being. The more active you are physically, the longer you live. And there are evidence, evidences to show this. It was great fascination for me. And I decided to do a little more research into it. And lo and behold, I was setting up a school, a sports school. And I integrated some of my learnings in, in, in the issue of active transport into the school. And three years down the line, I was invited to the, to the 13th World Public Health Congress in Ethiopia to come and present my own case study of what happened to my children in school that imbibed this culture of active transport because I integrated it into the school's program that whether you liked it or not, you would carry out a minimum amount of physical activity on the campus, you would things. So even if you get to the school today, you find that there's nowhere you, you can put your car. The car is far away from the school. And every student who comes in there will have to trek to the dormitory with his, with his box seat dormitory to the classroom. There's a particular distance from the classroom to the dining distance. So and everybody whether you liked it or not. And somehow we managed to sustain the minimum amount of distance that would fetch us what we were looking for in terms of active transport every day. Um, and add to this also, of course, there are physical activity in sports. Um, we, after the research that we did, from six hours a day that we were told we could give these children sports, we managed to get four hours into our sporting programs. So aside from physically being active, walking and jogging and all of that every day to the classroom, to the dormitory, to this and that, we also give them four hours of sports. And the product is what took me to Ethiopia, to the World Public Health Congress, because it was fascinating, the result of uh, the combination of uh, organizing of getting physically active. Um, one of them is that when you go to regular schools, you would find that at two o'clock in the afternoon, children are tired, they are falling asleep, they want to you know leave the classroom and so on and so forth. When you come to our own school, um, First three months, they are like every other student. But after the first three months, for the rest of their five and a half years in that school, when it is two o'clock, when everybody should be tired, my students are super active. They carry this, their physical, this their state of well-being, of physical well-being throughout the day. So our students be the most physically fit and healthy students. The healthy side of it also combines their diet, of course. I believe of all schools in Nigeria, without question. And um, for this reason, we have the evidence to show that um, in, the, in the first, we, we 60 of our students were offered. And the, the students who came into our school, we are not students of rich children or or who were academically sound in any because they, their, their focus was on sports. So they were not academically sharp in any way. Um, they were the dollars. 
Western academics, and they will be brought to our school. But what happened in the first seven years was that 60 of them, until 125, 60 of them, and or colleges, all of them on scholarship, $52,000 scholarship for these children. And it is on the basis of their combination of sports, their state of physical well-being made academics a lot easier, even though we also introduced a new methodology of teaching children that we assume have learning difficulty. So this combination, but particularly physical well-being, which helped them spiritually, which helped them even mentally, created special students who were passing their exams like no man's business. And we found 60 of them in American universities. Now, the number has increased significantly. Some are now going to India, and they are in some Indian universities. Just a result of something I will just define to you as move, leave, is move. You know, that's the word that captures everything. Move, and then you leave and enjoy the world longer. As far as I'm concerned, I became um, ambassador for non-communicable diseases in Nigeria, Nigeria Alliance. They made me champion of exercise is medicine. As a result of the work that I am doing, particularly in getting young children to be healthy, to be fit, and become ambassadors of, you know, this program. Um, so. I, um, and um, we are doing a lot of research, you know, and we found out that we don't have obese students in our school. And we have assured the students that if you can sustain the combination of good food and the exercise and physical activity that they are doing, that they are blessed. They will not have hypertension. They will not have some cancers. They will not have some issues of diabetes. They will live very useful, long lives. And when they turn 71, as I did last year, they will still play tennis three or four times every week. And against some of the national players of tennis in this country. So, well, that's, that's it for me. Um, I don't know if my time is up, but yes, I've spoken for more than 15 minutes now. That's it. Um, I thank you very much once again for inviting me. And um, because this is a subject that is very close to my heart, I am an ambassador of it. Um, if there are other opportunities and you give me enough notice, then I can trash these things a lot better than we have done today. Many late for coming in unprepared. But I hope there's something you can take away from what I just said this evening. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Chief. I, I mean, I definitely learned um, a lot. I'm really sorry about fighting childhood obesity and creating a school and an environment for kids to thrive academically and then also physically throughout um, sports and movement, incorporating that in there into a great initiative. and. Hopefully, it's something that the kids will hold on to. <laughs> Playing tennis just like you. So thank you so much um, for that, uh, for being our keynote speaker. We're starting soon. And this will be uh, taught by a coach on our lap of Martins, and it will be focused on fitness and wellness. And so I'll just give it. Um, about Coach on a lot about Martins. So she is a sports and fitness coach. She currently um, holds a bachelor's degree in sports and rec from the prestigious located in Manila, Philippines. 
during her basketball playing days, she played for Nigeria. Blue Yole Babes, um, Ogun State, State Female, and, uh, and Lagos State basketball team. She has also played and competed in the Philippines, uh, Benin Republic. Basketball development programs, and she here at the City Sports School. She's married to Oluche um, Martins. Um, various ways, both in their local church and in the body of Christ in general. So I am pleased to welcome um, our I'm grateful. Thank you very much. I'm grateful. Thank you for the great opportunity. Um, Thank you, my to... <laughs> Okay. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much. I'm grateful for the opportunity. It's a great honor, and I don't take it for granted at all. So today, um, I'm going to be talking about fitness and wellness and physical um, activities at the same time. But before I dive in, I would like us to um, begin with little mindfulness and breathing exercise that will ground us into what we're about to talk about. And so I'm going to start out. I want um, everyone to join me. If you're, if you have your, your easy wear, you could just um, stand up and join me with these exercises, and also breathe with me. All right. So nice. So come and set the camera. All right. So we're going to be. Uh, breathing so we're going to start with inhaling so we're going to do that like 10 times and uh, so we're going to inhale 10 times i also want to hear us yes so we're going to inhale together breathing out inhale Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. I want us to breathe in hard and we're going to exhale, giant exhale with our mouth open while like together. So we're going to breathe in. Out. We're going to do that three times. Exhale. Inhale for the last time. Exhale. So this time around, I want us to do a boss breath. So we're going to do it five times. So I want you to inhale deep. Uh, make sure you have enough hair as, as much as you can. And then after the hair, after taking the hair in, you're going to bust out the breath like, like that. So we'll do three times. Are we ready? Let's go. Inhale. Exhale, boss breath. Another one. Exhale. Again. Exhale. For the last time, make sure you're smiling. Inhale. Exhale. Amazing. I can see you're doing a great job. So this time around, I want us to Stand up on our feet, stack your foot apart, but make sure you ground yourself on the floor. You can join me, Brogidian. Okay. So this time around, we're going to go up, raise our hands up high, and then we're going to breathe and bring down your arm, squeeze your shoulder blade together. Make sure you're breathing. Inhale, exhale. Up again. I want you to come down, bring your hands down this time around. Put one by your waist, the other arms up, bend to that side slowly. Good job, you are doing amazing work. Back up, the second hand, same position. 
bend it slightly. You can reach forward. You're doing an amazing job. So this time around, you just want to shake your hand and then roll your shoulder backward. Make sure you're breathing. That's good. And this time around, you're bringing it forward. Nice and slow. Good job. So this time around, you want to just go down and hop side to side. If you can try to reach to your knee, you can do that. Side to side. Five, four, three, two, one. Amazing. Please, can you let me put the... Um, I want to see them practicing so that I can watch. Thank you. Yes, I want to make sure everybody's connected. Let me see if they're doing what I'm doing. Yes, okay. Uh, I'm sorry, everyone. I just want to make sure that some of us are doing the... Okay. All right. Okay. So, we're still stretching. Down, second hand. Nice. Again, hop. So, I want us to stretch our back. Slowly and gentle. This time around, we are going low, bending on squat position. We're stretching. Just go easy, nice and slow. Make sure you're breathing. Nice. All right, thank you. Oops. Um. Thank you, everyone. So um, I'm going to take a few questions. I want to ask, how do we feel? Did anyone participate in the stretching? Um, can I get one or two answers? Is everyone there? Yeah, everyone is on mute. Okay. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, sir. So, um, so, sir, how do you feel? Good. Amazing. Amazing. Can someone else speak, please? Thank you. Okay, so because of our time, since no one is speaking, I guess I'll just go ahead. Um, so I'm going to be talking about physical fitness. And um, it's the ability to perform daily tasks with ease, without becoming tired or um, also to enjoy um, your leisure, your hobbies, um, doing all that um, you need to do. Uh, so, so first off, some people always think that um, they can only be physically fit only if they go to the gym or 
if they have sports equipment or do some kind of whatever it is but um, you can actually just have a fitness life with your daily um, lifestyle I mean fitness is, is a li lifestyle that's what it is because you cannot like what daddy or Debami said earlier you uh, most of um, us that we're athletes we always you know wind up um, after we finish playing and then we just go back to our normal life and then we do not like engage in those physical activities like I used to be a varsity player when I was in the Philippines even before I traveled to school but the thing um, most other people go to the gym once in a while maybe once Saturday but my own lifestyle is from Monday to Saturday and sometimes on Sundays we wind up uh, playing competitions on Sunday and <laughs> I remember when I was um, when I was in that um, regime I always want to um, I always pray that when, when, when will I stop this lifestyle when is it going to be over and all of that and immediately when I finish um, my university because I was a varsity player immediately I finished my university I just stopped playing automatically I just stopped playing and before you know it I started adding up and body size and all of that so but I was lucky when I become a personal trainer and functional coach um, I get to like train other people so even if I'm lazy to work out I still have to stay fit for other people like today I've gone to um, I went to Lekki somewhere in Obit. I had some students I used to take basketball programs with um, every morning so even if I said I'm not going to engage in sport I don't like I still wind up exercising or sometimes I join them demonstrating or still playing so it helps a lot aside that I'll just sleep at home if I don't have sessions I don't want to work out but when I started increasing in size and all of that I just start doing my mindfulness stretching at home and so there are days I don't have time to run I just play some cardio um, some music some Christian music and I just move my body to ease so what I tell myself every day is you just have to move so you do not even need too much to um, to stay fit so aside from talking about your um, your diet and all of that you don't need too much to um, to stay fit so I'm going to be talking about five um, components of fitness which is uh, first is body composition um, flexibility muscular strength cardio respiratory endurance and muscular endurance so first of all um, our body composition is um, is very very important and then like like when I I started with um, with mindfulness stretching you know those stretching can even help you to stay flexible as well without doing um, cardio or HIIT programs and all of that so that's that that's like um, that's like another thing for you to do if you don't want to start running or jumping anywhere so I'm going to be talking about the f um, what fitness is so in summary fitness does not mean to be um, physically only it also means that you should be mentally healthy not just your physical um, not just your physical health alone but mentally um, there are some times that you you have stops going on but immediately I just get up to stretch I just forget those things because I just ground myself and then some some pain will go you know you you get relief from your body sometimes even a little stretch can help you um, the fact that some, sometimes you know people who work at the office as well you have pain by your neck your your lower back and all of that because you sit all day so some people said they work like for example if you're living a, a kind of lifestyle in Lagos here yeah, you have to um, go to work as early as 4 4 30 5 a.m. and then you're also back late in the night as well you know and a lot of people say that there's no time to really go to the gym and all of that but I'm going to say that um, you can still move your body maybe by doing chores and you know um, doing chores in the house washing doing all of those things so that also help you to move your body and then just create like 10 to um, 20 to 30 minutes most times to do this um, stational stretch and um, stretching when you google online you're going to see those things I'm talking about those stational stretching part of what we did earlier but we didn't get on the floor the part that you're still going to get on the floor will really help and then so um, I'm going to be talking about the main types of uh, physical activities which I mentioned earlier uh, which is aerobics um, muscle strengthening um, bone strengthening there are some of these exercises that you can still do and it's still, it's still going to um, strengthen your your muscles it's going to strengthen your bone as well so I have few um, 
exercise that I already laid out here. But first of all, I want to talk about the 10 characteristics of, of fitness, uh, which is um, cardiovascular, respiratory, and endurance. Um, talk about stamina, stamina, strength, flexibility, power, coordination, agility, accuracy, and balance. You know, um, most of these things are part of the things that keeps us going even during the day. Um, we used to call something uh, willpower. You know, like I said earlier, I've been exhausted this. Mo um, I've been exhausted this morning. I mean, the distance of going to the island, coming back to um, to the mainland. But before we begin, even but as at when we start this broadcast, I'm almost you know getting tired and all of that. But immediately we did the um, breathing exercise and stretching. I feel I feel light. I feel relieved as, as well. I'm sure I can still do a lot of um, physical um, physical things that I, that I have to use my body for. So, um, so you are as fit as you are, competent in each of these 10 skills and reg uh, regimen develops fitness to the extent that it improves each of them. So, um, so uh, I also want to like mention part of um, dimensions of wellness. And so uh, I'm going to talk talking about the three dimensions of wellness. So the first one is um, emotional wellness. Emotional awareness, it refers to building an awareness of and accepting one's feeling and mood. It includes finding a way to encourage positive thinking and acceptance of oneself, of oneself. So social awareness is, entails being a cognizant of the impact you and your actions have on your community, the society and the nature itself. So physical wellness. Physical awareness includes expanding your knowledge about your lifestyle and how food, good nutrition, and physical activity can be an integral part of your, your lifestyle. So um, that's that about. So I also want to like put us through few, um, few exercises that we can, we can do at home. Few exercises we can do at home. We call it body weight exercises. And these are, um, these are exercises that can help you. Without equipment at all, you are going to um, be able to do those exercises. Um, I'm going to, I might probably share my slide, and then you can also Google search on exercises you can do at home without, um, without equipment, or the exercise you can do at home without equipment, which I'm going to start with. So first, I'm going to start with um, jumping jack. Um, so I'm going to start with jumping jack. Right. I already put a, um, a picture representation of jumping jack. So when you're starting, your feet are together, your, your hands We can't see the demonstration. So I'm going to be starting with jumping jacks. Your hands will be by your side. And then by the time you're taking the hands up, you're opening your leg wild. And by the time you're coming down, your feet together down, hands down. So that is what they call jumping jacks. So you go this way. So this exercise, you can do it like, let me say, uh, maybe 20 reps of, of, of three. So you can do it, you count of three, and then um, 20, 20 sets, three reps. So, and then you can also have what we call side lunge. Side lunge, this is side lunge, um, side lunge. You can also call it lateral lunges. If you do this, this helps you to open your pelvic floor almost all the time. When you do it, you feel relieved. And then there's also what we call forward lunge. You can, you can also have, um, like in, if you're in the house, you can have maybe some bottles, something heavy like two keg, not too heavy, maybe one kg or two kg. You can also lift it. This helps you um, strengthen your legs as well, strengthen your, your hip. It's also strengthening your arm string as well. 
and it can help you with your ankle. I also have few, um, I also have what we call squat. So you can squat while your hands are forward. You can also squat with your hands in your chest or sideways. So you squat, you go just down, up, down, up. Make sure that your knee is not over your, your toes. If you do that, you're going to get yourself injured a whole lot of time. And then there's something we call running on the spot as well. That can help you, like your jogging. Jogging on the spot, that can also help you. That's one of the exercises you can do. And then we also have jump squat. You jump, you squat, you jump, you squat, you jump, you squat. If you do like, um, like five of these exercises at a time, maybe 20, 20 reps and then three sets. This will also help you burn calories and a lot more. And then we have mountain climbers. So this is the position, like you want to do a push-up and then you fold your knee in, in and back, in and back. So in motion, you do this, like you're climbing the mountain. So that's what that means. And I also have um, another one that we call plank tap. You stay on plank position, but you're going to tap your shoulder. Once you do this, this gives you a lot of agility. It helps you strengthen your core. It helps you strengthen your hands and shoulders. Right. One, two, three, four, five. So this helps um, strengthen your core. This is the core area. It helps you strengthen your leg. It helps you strengthen your hands. So even if you, you do a work that you need to lift something heavy, and then you see that you're also strong to do a lot of things. And um, last one, I have a lot, but then I just want to show a few of those um, exercises that you can do at home without um, equipment. So there's what we call burpees. These ones are part of the exercises that can help you for, for your cardio as well. So we call these um, burpees. When you jump, you jump up, you go down. I think the mic might have disconnected. We can't hear you. Yeah, I'm sure they'll be back very soon. Okay, yes, just, just a few minutes. Just having some technical difficulties with um, the microphone. I'm trying to resolve that issue. Yeah, I'm going to be a little bit of a picture. I'm going to be a little bit of a picture. Yeah, I'm going to be a little bit of a picture. Yeah, I'm going to be a little bit of a picture. Yeah, I'm going to be a little bit of a picture. Yeah,
He has taken away my sorrow and now I'm free. I got my brother and we have a root. I got my brother and we have a root. We got the peace of the family and I shall have it. Double, double, heavenly blessing that he might have received. Ah, God, in your grace and mercy, is always the part of it. Tommy, I'll suggest we go to the next speaker. Hopefully, if the technical issue is resolved, we can come back and take the remaining part of our presentation. Is that okay? Yes. Okay, so um, thank you, Coach Martins, for your seminar. Um, I really enjoyed it. Um, I also like doing body weight workouts sometimes when I'm not able to go to the gym, and it's great to have options that you can use <coughs> have uh, equipment. Um, I think probably my favorite is, uh, I like to do bridge, but I also like to do uh, jump squats. So that's great. So our next speaker that will be speaking and take it over the second uh, seminar will be Dr. Ms. Oyinka uh, Shobamowo. And so I'll just give a brief inter introduction about her, a brief brow about her so we can learn a little bit um, about her before she comes to us. So uh, Dr. Ms. She graduated with her MBBS Hans from the University of Lagos in 1970. She obtained a diploma in family medicine from the Nigerian Postgraduate College in 2014. She is currently uh, the medical director of ONS Hospital in Surulere, Lagos. It is a private hospital that was set up since 1989, um, offering general med uh, medical practice. She's a very proud member of Praise of His Glory Ministry, and Dr. Chabomowo is now semi-retired. She is happily married with children and grandchildren. So thank you so much for joining us today, Dr. Chabomowo, and we're so excited and glad to have you here leading our second seminar. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you so much, and um, I'm glad to be here. And I thank uh, Pastor Isaiah for this opportunity. Uh, to be able to give this brief talk. I told him I'm not techy at all. <laughs> I don't know how to share my screen. You have it. So, <laughs> <laughs> so all I did was just <laughs> send him my talk by mail and I was shocked at uh, what he needed out of it. Thank you. Am I loud and clear? Yes, ma'am. Oh, oh, okay. So, uh, my talk, I, I picked this. He said, um, just he was the medical angle. So, the role and management of the chronic diseases. I have my next slide, please. Great. So, what is lifestyle medicine? 
I must say that um, once I was in school, a uh, hostess, as already told you, I graduated in 1977. Lifestyle medicine was not a great topic. In fact, it was not part of our syllabus at all and has only become a specialty in recent years. So lifestyle medicine is essentially an approach that focuses on modifying unhealthy behaviors and promoting healthy ones to prevent, and I want you to please note these words, to prevent, to manage, and to reverse the progression of chronic diseases. And evidence shows that adopting a healthy lifestyle can reduce the incidence of. Next, please. Excuse me. Excuse me. Thank you. So, what is a chronic disease? And that's what we want to learn tonight. It's also called a non-communicable disease because it is not passed from person to person. You can recollect Mr. Engineer Shegun Odegbami had also mentioned this word to us, non-communicable disease. So any disease that is not passed from person to person is non-communicable and can also be described as chronic. So what are the characteristics we have here? It's a health condition that is persistent or otherwise long-lasting in its effects. Comes with time, that means it is associated with aging. It lasts one year or more. It requires ongoing medical attention. It limits activities of daily living and it is generally not cured. It can be immediately life-threatening as in heart disease and stroke or it may linger over time and need intensive management as in diabetes and life expectancy decreases with, with, with each additional chronic condition. What this means is that if you have one chronic condition like a high blood pressure, that has already decreased life expectancy. If diabetes is now added, in case we're talking about two chronic diseases, expectancy is further reduced. My next slide. So patients with chronic conditions must take medication for the rest of their lives and develop, I will call it a love affair. But well, here is a therapeutic alliance with their healthcare providers. That means you are always under care and you must keep regular appointments with your healthcare practitioner. Otherwise, they may succumb to the complications which affect many organs in the body. Yes, sir. The next slide. So, I have a list here of the major chronic diseases, which um, we can all see. Let me just run through them. Diabetes, cancer, cardiovascular disease, obesity, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, depression and anxiety disorders, lung diseases, Alzheimer's, Hepatitis, sinusitis, arthritis, asthma, back pain, kidney disease, 
high blood pressure. These are some major chronic diseases and I've already told you about the characteristics of chronic diseases. And the major downside is that they are usually not curable. Now, these health conditions consume 80% of healthcare visits, hospitalizations, and costs in every country. The treatment for chronic diseases are very high. The next slide. There are some risky behaviors that promote the onset and the progression of these diseases. Some of them are here. Risky behaviors, unhealthy behaviors, poor diet, sedentary lifestyle, smoking, lack of health screening, poor stress management, poor standard of care, insufficient sleep, and alcohol consumption. Number four, lack of health screening. When you get to a particular age, depending on what chronic condition you are, no, the previous slide, please. Depending on what chronic condition you have, you must go for your wellness screen as your doctor advises, maybe every year, maybe every two years. Number six, the poor standard of care, referring to the quality of health care that Hallelujah. Hello, hallelujah. And that many people are going to chemists and they're going to practitioners that are not really qualified. So these are the risky behaviors that can hallelujah. affect the progression hallelujah. of chronic disease. Thank you. The next slide. You are second. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. medicine embraces a simple but powerful therapy. Nutrition, number one. You choose a predominantly whole plant-based food that are filled with fiber, health-promoting, and disease-fighting. That's the first step. Whole plant-based food. And that's very, very powerful in lifestyle medicine. Hello. Number two, sleep. Hello. Lack of or poor quality of sleep can lead to a strained immune system. And we all know, I assume, what the immune system does. Keep the immune system, um, like the soldiers of our body, that help us to ward off infections and other diseases. So once your immune system is strained, your body just succumbs to infections and other kinds of diseases. So we must identify and alter any environmental habits that may hinder healthy sleep. And emphasized by the two speakers that we have had, regular and consistent physical activity is essential and effective, especially in managing obesity. Stress management. We need to develop coping mechanisms and techniques for the reduction of negative stressors and overall well-being. So that's personal. You determine what are your positive stressors and which are the negative ones. And you need to 
develop coping Positive social connections with family and friends are also effective in the prevention of these conditions. And I also have to mention here that being part of a worshiping congregation, taking very active roles in church, being regular at fellowship, and generally having sisters and brothers who you can talk to, who can encourage you, strengthen you, we found that influence on the welfare of patients that have a chronic diseases. And also, avoidance of risky substance addictive drug cycles. Hmm. So we are really responsible for our choice of lifestyle. In addition to this, lifestyle medicine can also be cost effective by reducing the need for expensive medical interventions such as surgeries, medications, and hospitalizations. Lifestyle interventions are often free making them accessible to a wide range of people. They have been provided by God for his people to live long and healthy lives. And I have a reference here, 1 Corinthians 6, 19 to 20. not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you which ye have of God and ye are not your own for ye are the price. Therefore glorify God and that's why I said we are responsible for our choice of lifestyle. If my body is the temple of the Holy Spirit and I don't belong to myself, then it behoves me to keep this body in top form, in a very healthy condition, especially as God himself has made these lifestyle interventions available to us in that end, Chronic, they can reverse the effects of illnesses and they can prevent chronic illness. It seems like her line dropped out. Let's please give her uh, a few seconds. <laughs> I'm sorry, a call came in. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sorry. Yes, a call came in and, and I just got disconnected. I'm sorry. I think I'm going to my, my last slide now. All right. So, should I scroll it? 
I'm, I'm, I think I'm almost done. Okay, so as I was saying, before I got disconnected, sorry. Our bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit who is in us, whom we have from God, and we are not our own. Therefore, we must not violate his standards for living. If we do so, it means we are still enslaved to our desires. Uh, go on, sir. Right. The next slide. Mm -hmm. So I have here the risk factors for setting in of a chronic diseases, which uh, lifestyle medicine recognizes. So I put here loss of the eyes which is preoccupation with gratifying our physical desires. Here I will put a gluttony where we just uh, want to satisfy or gratify the flesh by eating, 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 and just eating whatever appeals to us especially when we know that this is unhealthy. I have a condition, I should not be eating this kind of food, but because of the loss of the eyes and I'm not disciplined enough, I succumb. And it's the same with consumption of alcohol, is the same thing with um, taking substances that are risky to health, like addictive drugs, I'm smoking cigarettes and all that. So I put that under lust of the eyes. And I put lust of the flesh, craving and accumulating things. That's, that's like a rat race. Because how, how do you have peace if you are constantly um, in the, this rat race? You want everything and anything and at any cost. Can be sure that the blood pressure will go up and everything else that is associated with it. And I also put the pride of life. When we, we get so obsessed with, with our status, and um, that's, that's, that's all we're chasing, ne neglecting to observe the simple things that are so important to keep us healthy in life. So Apostle John tells us here, for all that is in the world, the loss of the eyes, the loss of the flesh, and the loss of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. So God himself has given us this uh, lifestyle interventions to use because Chronic diseases don't really have a cure. The next slide, please. So God will grant us the grace like Paul, who said in um, 1 Corinthians 9.27, but I keep under my body and bring it into subjection. Because adhering to these things that I've spoken requires a lot of discipline. They're not easy. And I know our flesh always wants to take the easy way out. So we need a lot of discipline. And it's only the Holy Spirit really who can give us that grace, the enablement and that empowerment to be disciplined, to keep these simple interventions that I've discussed this evening, 
Let me just go over them again. Just six. A whole food plant predominantly eaten pattern. Consistent, regular physical activity. Quality sleep. Stress management. Avoidance of risky substances and a positive social connection. These interventions provide effective prevention of these conditions. So I prayed for myself at the end that um, I may not be disqualified after I have spoken to you tonight because I know I've fallen short in a number of um, areas myself. Now I want to talk about the big C in rounding up. I want to talk about can cancer, the dreaded word. We don't know how it works, but it has been shown that a balanced, healthy diet and weight management because it has been found that obesity fuels the onset of cancer regular physical activity good sleep and a limit of alcohol consumption helps in preventing cancer in the response to treatment of cancer and preventing cancer from coming back. Evidence has shown it. So I appeal to all of us, including myself, to please take this intervention very, very seriously to heart. And if we have not been as a result of this uh, seminar, it's never too late to start. Result of this seminar today, let us embrace the six interventions that I've talked about. Thank you. God bless us all. Mm -hmm. Amen. Thank you so much, Dr. and Mrs. Shabalawa. I was really inspired and encouraged by um, your seminar. I think it was really. Amen. Amen. I do too. Thank you. I definitely learned. <laughs> Some of the things that I'll be able to incorporate into my lifestyle. Um, I believe Coach Martins is able to come back to finish to wrap up her session before we um, go into the Q and A session. Also, if you have any questions, um, please save them in the chat, and we'll be sure to go over them when we enter the Q and A session. But Coach Martins, yes. are you there? Yes, I'm here. Yes, I'm here. Can you hear me? Hello. Hello. Bro, Toby, you want to come on? Sorry, say it again. Yeah, I think Bro, Toby should be unmuting himself. Okay. Okay, so should I just go with my I voice? think we can just go on uh, with the Q&A with uh, Dr. Shoba Moore, and then she can come on later. Thank you, everyone, for sending. Um, so one so minute, minute is trying, trying to, to uh, go back, go and, back, back and get back into Zoom, Zoom because, because it's, it's, it's went, it's out, went as well. out as well. Okay. Okay. Hello. Okay, with my phone. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes. yes. All right. Yes. So All right. since it's so trying to it's come trying... up with um, with this um, Zoom, so I just said that okay, let me let me use my phone in speaking. So I also mentioned that I cannot um, continue with the exercise demonstration again because of the mic because I have to move my body. There's something I have to jump and go back and forth. 
So, um, so uh, what I want to talk about again is that um, for our fitness goal, we just have to, you know, start slowly. There are some things I want to talk about that um, Dr. Mrs. already mentioned. Um, so I want to talk about for starting um, slowly, building up gradually. You know, you just have to give yourself to a lot of warm up before um, engaging in your exercise. These are we used to call it warm up. Those are um, the kind of stretching you start with before you begin vigorous exercises. And then there's this part you also do a cool down after you're done with all your exercise. There's what we call cool down. It's also a form of exercise um, stretching as well. So when you do those stretching. It will help you heal up some of your um, some of your muscles. You know that they are elastic. You know, um, whenever you try to stretch them, they they can go back to how they were. So for you not to have a sore body, you have to begin with um, stretching and then end with stretching. So we call the one we're starting with with warm up. What the one we do when we're done um, with our exercises is called cool down. And then so um, I also want to talk about. Um, you breaking things up, you know, you don't have to do all your exercise at the same time. Um, I think I'm going to like um, do something by myself. I will try and be creating maybe workout for us every week. Uh, I can put that on myself. Maybe um, exercises you can do at home weekly because I'm also on the platform. I can send in exercises we can do weekly. I can also send a nation of demonstration of those Recording in progress. In case you don't, in case you, don't, um, um, in case you in cannot, case you cannot go, online go online with it and all of that. So, so um, um, another thing another is thing you have to be creative, you have to listen to your body. Your body. And then, then um, um, sorry, one, sorry second. one second. I want to I want unmute. To unmute. Um, so you have to be creative, you have to um, understand your body, and you have to listen to your body as well and also be, be flexible. So that is it about um, the exercises and um, the most important thing is to just understand what your body fitness is. Um, you can also check yourself. Some of us have uh, smartphones or smartwatch that could you know, tell us what our heart rate is. And, and all of that. So, um, so going forward, I might start sending in a workout that we can be doing at home, um, maybe every week, maybe weekends. But those are exercises at least you can do maybe three to four times a week. You don't have to rush it. You don't have to change your um, your lifestyle, but you can just walk around it. That's what um, I mean. You don't have to change your routine completely, but you can um, start learning to do all these exercises one step at a time like the squats like the jump squats like the um, toe taps you know and the rest like that i also want to talk about nut uh, nutrition as well i also have a food plan that i'm willing to share um, to everyone that um, because food our diet is also very very important is an integral part of our um, our fitness journey because um, without that we might just um, wind up doing the wrong thing and as well if you also have the capacity to hit the gym we can also go to the gym um, you know get a personal trainer understand all your body components understand how your leg works under, understand uh, maybe even even if you have injury you know make sure you have x-ray done first before you begin to do any form of exercises all right so yes and should, should i exercise every day i'm not i'm not going to say you should push yourself too much like i mentioned when i started earlier that it's okay to exercise every day but there are days that you have to um, give your body rest you have to you know um, get your body back in shape so those are the times i i recommend you can do stretching you know to help your body to move your body you know so that's that's that and so i think i'm just going to end here thanks for listening and then if you have any question or what have you so let's just let's get right into the um, question and answer thank you mm -hmm. thank you so much coach for um i really enjoyed what you spoke about today especially um i think it's definitely really, really important to also have rest and recovery days in between um, working out so that your body can recover, uh, you can recover and recoup. Um, so you can have, maybe you can alternate. Sometimes people do, you know, three days split for the week. 
Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, or some people do um, two-day yeah. split, Tuesdays and Thursdays. So I think that's very important when you're um, trying to be fit and trying to build a routine. It's always very important to include rest days. So thank you for also speaking on that. Um, so yeah. now we will transition into our Q&A session. So please, if you have any more questions that you would like to um, get answered as you had during the course of um, the seminar, please send it in the um, chat uh, area. And we're gonna get started. So, okay, one of the questions is, one of the questions is, how do you navigate the challenges of other conflicting busy routines? Practical tips. So if any of our speakers would like to um, unmute and answer that question. Is, is Chief Shagwande Wami still on the line? I don't think so. I'm just seeing him in the list of participants. No, he's out. What was the question again? Okay. Uh, the question is, how do you navigate the challenges of conflicting busy routine? Practical tips? Okay, so on that, I'm going to say that when you're trying, when you have a busy schedule, like I mentioned earlier, that there are days that you still have time to do chores. Those are times that you can still like um, incorporate your um, workout routine into. And again, I said that um, sometimes if you if you have time, especially at night, or maybe with your busyness, some people have stairs at their workplace. So instead of using the elevator, you can use the stairs. You know, and then maybe in between, you can also learn to work. So I think that works a lot. And I make sure that your diet is also um, very, very important to just take, um, take that very important as well. So that can help you with your fitness um, lifestyle. And then I will also say that if you cannot wake up early, because some people are not really money person. So if you cannot do your workout in the morning, early in the morning, you can like shift it to like evening. I remember um, I stayed somewhere in Banana Island a few um, couple of years ago and as busy as I was during that period, I, I find time to take work every evening and because um, the estate is very secured, you know, you can work at night, nobody will stop you. So I found that really, really interesting, you know, when I, after stretching, I just take a walk and sometimes I just jog down. And I will only say for, for you to do a workout routine, you don't need more than 30 to 40, max is 45 to 60 minutes, see? So that's like just an hour. So you can actually be consistent, maybe for 20 to 15 minutes. Um, I used to encourage some men as well that does not have time to work out. I tell them when, you, when they wake up first thing in the morning, they should stretch. After stretching, maybe do like, let's say 50 push up, do sit ups and stretch your body. Before you know, you'll be, you'll be physically fit somewhat. And places that you should, you should walk, you don't have to drive or you don't have to, yes, you don't have to drive. You can just take a walk sometimes. So learn how to take a walk. Um, make sure that your workout within 20 to 30 minutes, you can definitely get a workout routine done and then you're going to stay fit. So I, I don't know if that answered the question well. I think that was um, a really great answer to that question. I know something that I do sometimes. If I can't get in like all my steps, if I end up going out of the house to run an errand, I park farther away. So then I'm, when I'm walking you in the parking lot or if I'm walking around the store, I take my time. Um, so that's another thing I think that people could easily incorporate, you know, park a little bit farther and then, you know, stretch your legs. So thank you for that answer. I think it was uh, really helpful and um, gave us some practical advice and practical tips. So another question that we have, um, says, given the Nigerian environment and infrastructure, including security, what are the practical options available to support such lifestyle, active transport? Um, so active, active transport was something that Chief, um, Chief Odebami mentioned earlier in his keynote address, talking about um, different ways that we can incorporate um, being active in our day-to-day -day lives. So that's another question we have. Maybe you have people who haven't typed their questions, but they want to put up their hands as well. We can always switch between uh, the written ones and those that I want to ask. 
over the mic. If you have any questions, you can um, use the raise hand uh, option, and then um, you can unmute and you can, you can ask your question. You don't want to send it in chat. I have one question for both speakers. How a lot of us as men have our tummies protruding every day. We don't drink beer. Yet our tummies are protruding. What do we do to control the protrusion? Okay. Is mommy answering or I should go first? Yeah, you can okay. go first. <laughs> okay. Uh, so I, I'm just going to put the quarter of, of, of this. So the thing is, most times we tend to eat late at night. So when we eat late at night, it's also hard to these things, aside from um, taking beer. And then, so when I talk about um, um, my diet earlier, nutrition is, is part of what we're talking about, that um, you're going to reduce your... Uh, your sugar, your um, soda, you're going to reduce your, um, what's it called now, eating late, maybe fatty food and all of that. So there are times, I said I was going to share um, a food plan later. So sometimes what you eat and when you eat them used to cause all these situations. And so people also eat and sleep and sleep immediately. And stress also um, contributes to having those um, protrude bellies. So that's what I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Shabamoa, did you also want to um, share some insight on that question as well? Okay, yes, yeah, um, yes, I did. And I just wanted to say that with age, in some men, the distribution of the fat is altered such that it accumulates in the mid section. So even without drinking um, alcohol, you find there's a lot of fatty deposits in the abdominal area. To prevent that, or to control that, especially if you find that, okay, my dad was like that, in which case um, there's some genetic connection. You start with the lifestyle interventions that I had mentioned, concentrating especially on the diet, mainly plant-based, and then consistent physical activity. It should prevent it. And even if the fat starts to accumulate, with those measures, it would, men would not be looking like um, women who are almost due to go into the labor room. So you, you, we need to be aware that <laughs> this would come with age and we start to take the steps. Um, very early. People generally associate it with taking alcohol and then the men get careless. So that's it. Thank you. Thank you, Coach Martins and uh, Dr. Shabamo. Um, somebody said in the chat, Fulika said that they said crunchy crunches and sit-ups help. Um, yes, I believe doing a lot of abdominal exercises that target target your midsection also helps um, to lose a couple of inches around the waist if people are um, wanting to focus on specific areas as they um, continue on their fitness journey. So on to uh, the next question. I want to answer the question about okay. crunches helping for the abdominal so it's actually a seminar on fitness and wellness, lifestyle, medicine, and everything. By the grace of God, next week, Saturday, we're going to wrap it up 
with a healing service, a virtual healing service. And we're going to have Reverend Dr. Shegun Adeleke. He's going to be leading us in that healing uh, service and Holy Communion as well. So please, at uh, the same time next week, let us connect and the Lord will bless us. So those of us who may be having challenges with our health already, the Lord will reach out to us to, uh, to touch our lives and we will experience his healing in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. um, on the platform, like um, our sister mentioned earlier, from today till next week, Saturday, everybody who is on that platform, please, we want to encourage you to post something you're doing. If you're taking a long walk, please post it. If you, whatever you're doing, just to keep it in the next one week, we'd like you to please post it on the group chat. And if you are not on that group chat, that's Praise of Glory Ministry Missions Update group chat, and you'd like to be added, you can also post your phone number um, on the group chat, uh, on the chat box now. And we'll add you to that group chat so that you also can post whatever you're doing differently. Some of us, maybe we don't normally take walks. Um, you want to do that this week. Or maybe you take walks. You want to increase the number of steps. Anything you want to do just to further, you know, uh, build your fitness. Please do it this week. And the Lord, it will prosper your health in Jesus' name. Um, before we go, there's something we always want to do. And uh, I'm going to um, share my screen right now. Uh, we want to confess, you know, this covenant that we have. Can we all see my screen? Please unmute yourself. Yeah. If you can hear me, can you see my screen? No, yeah. You stay up here. Yes. Oh, please, it's everybody, please unmute yourself if you can see my screen. The screen, yes. yes, it has come up now. Yes. It's just come. Yes, okay, see. praise God. So before we do this, I want to thank all of us for connecting once again. Uh, we're glad that even our missionaries connected from different parts of the globe to be a part of this. Thank you very much. The Lord will continue to keep you all healthy as you do His work in Jesus' name. And all of us too who are part of missions, one way or the other, either through giving or praying. May the Lord continue to uphold all of us Amen. and bless us in Jesus' name. Amen. So after this session, Reverend Dr. Ayoliri is going to close with all the prayer. And uh, we're going to read this covenant together and claim it for ourselves and our families. Are we ready to go? Yes. yes. I'd like us to do it meditatively. Let's not rush. Okay, one, two, go. Can you expand it? Like we can dwell in the place of the most high. We shall abide in the shadow of the Almighty. Amen. Amen. We will we say of the Lord, the Lord. He, is he is our refuge and our fortress. Our God, and in him, God. him we will trust. Amen. 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 Surely, he shall deliver us from the snare of the fowler and from the pregnant. Amen. Amen. He shall cover he shall us cover with our feathers, feathers, and under his wings shall take refuge. His truth shall be our shield and our buckler. Amen. 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 We shall not be afraid. We shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the hour that flies by day. Amen. 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 
we shall call upon him and he will answer us. And then we will be with us trouble. We will deliver us and honor us. Amen. With long life, he will satisfy and show us his salvation. Amen. 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 Hey. Hey, Amen. Dr. Oliri, please. Mm. <laughs> Reverend Ayoli, are you there? Okay. Let me ask Brother Shulotom to bless us with the closing prayer. Okay. Let us pray. In Jesus' name, Amen. our Lord, we bless you. We bless you and we worship you. You are such a good God. You care about every aspect of our lives and you are committed to making sure that all of our needs are met. And thank you for this day. Thank you for the learning. Thank you for insights. Thank you for understanding. Thank you for all trans you have granted our speakers. Thank you for wisdom gained. And thank you for the changes we, we will definitely experience by reason of this. Thank you for the putting of it together. All the glory, all the honor is yours. Lord, we trust mm -hmm. you that, Lord, it will not, we will not just hear and forget. But, Lord, you will cause this to bear fruit in our lives. That many of us have access to information like this in different ways. And, but often, Lord, often we hear and we forget. But we pray. That Lord, you will cause this to bear fruit in our lives. We have testimonies uh -huh. by reason of this in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Uh, we trust you even going forward, Lord, you will cause us to continue to increase in understanding and increase uh -huh. in bearing fruits, even concerning uh -huh. our body. We know you care for us in our spirit, our body, our soul. And you uh -huh. have met us at this point today. Lord, again, we say thank you. We thank you for the vessels you have used, both to organize and to speak to us. We pray, oh Lord, that they also will continue to grow to brighter and brighter for the part of the righteous time, brighter and brighter unto the perfect day. The mighty name of Jesus. So we close there, but the spirits of this program will not close now. It will cause us to continue in it. Bring it to your name. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise God. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, Brother Lawton is a missionary on the Christian Missionary Foundation, and he joined us from Malawi. God bless you. God bless the work you're Thank doing in Malawi. Jesus' name. Amen. And Amen. Before we share the grace, uh, this this um, program is recorded. If you go to Praise of Glory Ministry website at any time, you will see the link there. If you want to watch it again to refresh your mind, refresh yourself about what you learned tonight it is on the um website you can see the program there god bless us all can we share the grace together um, with right. the grace of amen and surely God's goodness is
Amen. Amen. Praise God. Let's Amen. just remember next Saturday we'll connect again for the communion and healing service. God bless Amen. you. Please make sure you post your exercises this week. Okay. The Lord will continue to grant you grace for fitness and wellness in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank, Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you, sir. Bye-bye. Amen. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye. 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 Bye.